verse 12. Therefore there was born even of one man, and him as good as dead at that, as many descendants as the, as the stars of heaven in number and innumerable as the sand which is by the seashore. Boy, I want to tell you something. When God makes a promise, He makes a promise. I mean, He comes to me, He doesn't say, He doesn't say, Look, look Abraham, uh, I'm going to come and I'm going to give you a son. No, He says, Abraham, come outside with me for a minute. Abraham says, Lord, can we just stay in the tent for a minute? I want to talk to you. I mean, I, I'm barren. I mean, I don't, I don't have any children. Abraham, can you come outside for a minute with me? Oh, Lord, can I, I, I really need to talk to you. I would really like to have a son. Abraham, come. Abraham, look up there. Count those stars. Lord, I want to have a son. Count those stars. Lord, I can't count those stars. There's too many stars. So is your descendants going to be. Abraham, look down at your feet. Lord, could, would you give me a son? Abraham, look down at your feet. Count the grains of sand. Lord, there's just too many grains of sand. I mean, no one can count that many grains of sand, Lord. So will your descendants be, Abraham. Lord, would you just give me a son? Abraham, would you shut your mouth and listen to me? I am not only going to give you a son, I am going to make your descendants more numerous than the stars in the heavens and the sand on the seashore and in the desert. He does exceedingly, abundantly, above all we ask or think. He was asking for a son. God gave him a nation. Now, I know that Jesus said, according to your faith, it will be done to you. And I know that's true. And I know there is a sound explanation for all of that. But I also know, as I look through Scripture, I don't see Abraham getting according to his faith. I see God doing exceedingly abundantly above all Abraham could ever ask or think in that context. I look at God's dealing with me, my grumbling, my weakness, lack of faith, my pathetic immaturity, my whining, that's the worst. And yet God continues to be faithful. And that's what we see here. When God does something, He does it in a tremendous, a tremendous way. So many times I have sat there in my office, I have cried, I have grumbled, I have doubted. I have been miserable, so many things, not trusting my God. And in spite of my lack of faith, He has never failed. This is not about the faith of some super spiritual saint. It is about some weak, grumbling little child who can't even learn one lesson about faith. And yet God never, 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 never fails. Can't you trust a God like that? Can't you begin to trust a God like that? I have a little plaque in my office that said, God gives the best to those who leave the choices up to Him. Can't you trust God with your finances? Can't you trust God with your needs? Some of you want different things and need different things and you go in debt to get them when only if you would have waited upon God, He might have provided that very thing for you without cost. You see, this is not just something that's dealing with missionaries. This is about every aspect of our life. I mean, pray for shoes. And last week, someone bought me these shoes. Do you see what I'm saying? Every need of yours, lift it up in prayer. Every need of yours into prayer. God so much appreciates, so much loves. Prayer is so much a part of who God is. There is something that He wants me to ask Him for so that He can get glory out of giving it. And so He sings to me a prayer so that I will, He will lead me into praying a prayer that I will pray back to Him and that He will answer. Well, why doesn't God just give it? Because He wants double glory. See, if I didn't pray for it and He just gave it, I would give Him glory for giving it. But not only do I give Him glory for giving it, I give Him glory for answering prayer. I had a friend, Herb Williams, and I love him so dearly. You know, when 
I get around a bunch of Calvinists and they start bad mouthing Arminians. I just think about old Herb. He loves God more than I think I ever will, and he's as Arminian as he can be. But I remember one time he wanted a guitar. He prayed for six months. And one day he walked out at like eight in the morning, getting ready to go to the ministry. We all worked in the street ministry. And he opened the door and there on the porch was a guitar. You say, highly impractical. Everything my God does is highly impractical. And the wonderful thing about it is that spiritually, I am a loser. If you only knew where I really am. If you only knew how much I whine, how much I doubt, how much I'm faithless. If you only knew the times I can't even have a quiet time. I can't even get up enough gumption to read my Bible for two days. I know I'm, most people don't want to hear that because they want to honor men more than they should. And people get mad at me for saying that. It's true. I have trouble obeying. I mean, you know, I'm talking about theology. I, I'm still working on trying to figure out how to love my wife. I can't think of one reason except that he set his seal upon his children to do them good. You see, one day when I get to heaven, so, you know, Brother Jennings is not going to come up and throw his arm around me and say, I want to glorify God by telling you all the wonderful things Paul Washer did for him. He's going to throw his arm around me and say, I want to glorify God by telling you all the wonderful things that God did for Paul Washer. You see the difference? You see how twisted we can become? Well, if I can only reach this spiritual level, if I can only learn to pray this way, then, then yeah, God would do that too in my life. That is just stupid. Do you know what my most powerful prayer is? The most powerful prayer, I mean, when I'm in trouble, when I have to pull out the big gun, you know what my most powerful prayer is? The one that gives me most comfort at 3 o'clock in the morning in the dark? This. Lord, you know, you know, I'm going to bed now because you know. You know. Creep into the bedroom and try to wake up and say, How goes it? Woman, he knows. Let's go to bed. Oh, he's no good. I glory. I know this is going to go. Just listen to me before you throw a stone. I glory in my weakness. I glory. I don't want to say in my sin because that just sounds so theologically wrong. But if God can get glory out of my darkness, 